Hi everyone, my name is Virgil Ziegler Hill. I'm a social personality psychologist and I've been studying self-esteem and other related constructs like narcissism and how we think about ourselves for more than 20 years. I originally became interested in psychology when I was a high school student. I started taking a course uh, on psychology in high school, my senior year of high school. It was taught by a social studies teacher each day when we would come into class, essentially what he would do is he would ask us to read pages from our textbook while he read the newspaper. So it wasn't terribly engaging material, which may make you think, well, why would you be interested in a topic that was taught in such a boring way? What he did that captivated my interest was on the side, he was actually a stage hypnotist on weekends. And so he would occasionally, when he wasn't reading the newspaper, he would spend a few minutes telling us about some of the things that he'd been doing with his uh, hypnosis show. And so what he would do is he would occasionally, he would tell us these stories that I just found fascinating as a, you know, a 17 year old kid. Um, he would talk about sneaking into the bedroom where his mother-in-law was sleeping when she would visit to uh, try to hypnotize her into leaving earlier because he didn't like her uh, staying with him. He told us a story story about how um, when he was having an, a small elective surgery done, when normally he would be uh, anesthetized during that, um, he decided to do it under hypnosis rather than having anesthesia. And so I just thought that was fascinating. And so when I was 17, I thought that psychology had a lot to do with hypnosis and that they were intimately connected. So when I started college the next year, I decided to take a psychology course. I quickly found out that hypnosis has almost nothing to do with psychology, but I was fascinated by the other topics that were involved in the course. Very quickly, I decided to give up on the other sorts of ideas I had about potential majors. I thought about maybe being an accounting major, but I just, I, I was captivated by psychology. One of the things that I quickly became interested in was the idea of self-esteem. And that's why I selected self-esteem as my topic for this InfoJoy course. My interest in self-esteem, although I didn't really understand it at the time, probably had a bit to do with my childhood. When I was a young boy, I was really overweight as a kid. And so I, I felt badly about myself. Um, although I wasn't really necessarily thinking about having low self-esteem, that just wasn't something that was kind of in my mind at the time. As I got older, I decided, and when I reached adolescence, I decided that I wanted to change the course of my life. So I wanted to, I wanted to lose weight, for example. So I spent a, a summer dieting. I lost uh, 70 pounds over the course of about three or four months or so. And part of that was to feel better about myself. Now, in all honesty, I was also a teenage boy, so part of it was also hoping to uh, do a better job of attracting the attention of girls as well. I don't know if that part really paid off, but at least I've started to feel a bit better about myself. And so over time, I started to, uh, I started to understand through reading as a college student, the important connections that self-esteem have with a variety of aspects of our lives. What we've seen in the literature over time has been kind of a change in the way we think about self-esteem. It went from being something that people thought was going to cure every social ill imaginable to something that people thought for a while actually maybe wasn't all that important. And now we've turned the corner again and, and researchers have started to recognize that actually self-esteem does have important causal consequences. It does help us in terms of our interpersonal relationships, our occupational success, our academic achievement. Now, no one would argue that self-esteem is going to completely and utterly cure all of these things and make us you know, perfect people by any stretch of the imagination but it can help. It can help give you some more options. It can help you take advantage of opportunities to select yourself into situations to offer you a better life. What is self-esteem? We hear this word a lot. And in fact, if you walk down the, the aisles in a, in a local bookstore, you're gonna see all sorts of books in the self-help section, for example, that will have titles that involve self-esteem, how to improve your self-esteem, how to, how to build your self-esteem. Even though we hear this word a lot, oftentimes people don't really know what it means. So what self-esteem really is, is it's our evaluation of ourselves. Basically what it boils down to is how much do we like ourselves? How competent do we feel that we actually are? 
Where our self-esteem comes from is from how we view ourselves. When we think about who we are as a person, what sorts of beliefs do we have about ourselves? That's the idea of something called the self-concept, our picture of who we are as a person. Do you think that you're smart? Do you think that you're athletic? Do you think that you're physically attractive? Right? Those are all specific beliefs that we have about ourselves that make up our self-concept. Our self-esteem is what we actually, how we actually evaluate that self-concept. Do we like that person that we think we are? If we think that we're attractive and that we're smart, right, that would likely give rise to higher levels of self-esteem if we think that those are good qualities to possess. Self-esteem is on a continuum. So it isn't just that people either have high self-esteem or they have low self-esteem, but rather there's, a bra there's an array of different levels of self-esteem. Most of us fall somewhere in the middle. So it's a bell-shaped curve with most of us being here in the center. Some of us will have slightly higher self-esteem. Some of us will have really, really high levels of self-esteem. And then on the other side of that curve, we're also gonna have some people have somewhat low self-esteem within fewer people having really, really low self-esteem. So self-esteem is a continuum rather than being something where you're either high self-esteem or you're low self-esteem. One of the other important issues is that self-esteem isn't set in stone. It isn't the case that if you have low self-esteem today, that you're doomed to have low self-esteem for the rest of your life. It's changeable, it's malleable. Now that doesn't mean that it's going to simply fluctuate wildly, but what we want is to create a foundation for people to have secure self-esteem. What I want people to do is to feel quite good about themselves, but for that sense of self-worth to be built on a solid foundation that is well anchored, meaning that it doesn't change a lot from day to day. There are some individuals who might feel good about themselves, but it's wildly variable. It's unstable over time. And there are some negative consequences associated with that sort of instability. People who are, have unstable self-esteem tend to experience a lot of defensiveness. They're easily upset by the normal sorts of daily experiences of uh, negative events that we experience. Little minor setbacks, uh, for example, maybe you're doing a task at work and things don't go very well. People with unstable self-esteem tend to feel really, really badly about themselves in response to those sorts of events. So in addition to having high self-esteem, it's really important that our feelings of self-worth are based on a secure foundation. There are certain pillars that self-esteem are built on. One of them has to do with the idea of being realistic. It's important that people are honest with themselves about who they actually are. A second pillar of self-esteem is the idea of growth. When people are trying to develop their self-esteem, they should be focused on the idea of improving over time. So instead of comparing ourselves to other people out there in the world around us, instead it may be better for us to focus on who we were yesterday. Are we becoming a better person today than we were in the past? Right, Emphasizing this idea of growth. Right, And the last thing in terms of the pillars of self-esteem is robustness. What we want is for self-esteem to be robust, that it's something that can actually help us overcome the normal vicissitudes of life. All of us are going to face challenges in our daily lives, times where we don't get what we want, where things don't go exactly the way that we hoped that they would, where we get rejected by a romantic partner or a friend. And what self-esteem can help do is it can help provide a buffer that helps protect us from some of those sorts of events. There's been a tremendous amount of research done over the years looking at the consequences of self-esteem. One of the things that has come through very clearly in a lot of that work is that having high self-esteem is beneficial for you in a number of areas of your life. For example, when we look at longitudinal research, so there have been a, a large number of studies, some of them published very recently, that form what are called meta-analyses. So they go back and they put together a large number of studies, in some cases, dozens or hundreds of studies in some cases, and they look at the longitudinal effects of self-esteem. So they measure someone's self-esteem at one point in time, and then they follow up with them 
months or in some cases years or even decades later. And what this starts to tell us is can self-esteem at one point actually predict the course of our life later? What these studies typically show is that having higher levels of self-esteem at one point in your life predict a number of positive outcomes later on. So people with higher levels of self-esteem typically enjoy better interpersonal relationships. So their friendships are of a higher quality. Their romantic relationships typically are better than those of individuals with low self-esteem. They also experience some benefits in terms of things like their occupational success. Their job satisfaction is often higher. Um, the actual success that they're having in their positions is often a bit greater. Their academic achievement also tends to be a bit better as well. They're more successful in college. They're more successful in high school. We also see some benefits in terms of psychological well-being. People with higher levels of self-esteem are happier. They experience more joy in their day-to-day -day lives. They're also experiencing typically lower levels of depression and anxiety. We also see some, some benefits for physical health. Self-esteem at one point in time can predict later health outcomes in terms of areas like cardiovascular reactivity. Risk for stroke tends to be a bit lower in individuals with high self-esteem compared to those with low self-esteem. Also, even things like diabetic risk is a bit lower for individuals with high self-esteem. Now, this doesn't mean that self-esteem is going to be a, a perfect cure-all. It doesn't mean that just feeling good about yourself is going to ensure that you never experience any sort of problems and that your life is going to be perfect, right? I don't want to leave you with that impression. But what is important is that self-esteem can be beneficial. It, along with some other factors, can play a role in helping you live a, a better, more fulfilling life. I chose self-esteem as the topic for my InfoJoy course because I've seen firsthand the negative consequences when people experience low self-esteem. It can prevent them from making the sorts of choices that they want to improve their lives. For example, if you experience low self-esteem, it might prevent you from trying to get the job that you want. It might prevent you from making the sort of move to a new city that you really desperately want to make. It might prevent you from trying to establish new friendships or uh, start new romantic relationships with desirable partners. There are a whole host of negative consequences for low self-esteem. One of the things that we've learned over time is that it's possible to help people break these patterns. It's not necessarily easy, but there are some strategies that we'll talk about during this course that will help you both increase your self-esteem, and more importantly, strengthen the foundation of your self-esteem. Self-esteem at its heart needs to be realistic. And so this isn't going to be about gimmicks or tricks to make yourself believe that you're actually better than you are. We'll try to legitimately improve your self-esteem by focusing on the sources of self-esteem. One of the things that plays a big role in our feelings of self-worth is going to be our relationships with other people. When we have fulfilling relationships, where we feel liked and accepted by the people around us, where we feel like the people around us respect and admire us, those are legitimate sources that feed into our self-esteem. People sometimes believe that self-esteem is just something that we convince ourselves to have. That's actually not true. What self-esteem is doing is it's helping track information from the environment. How do we think we're doing in our social world? Do we believe that other people like us? Do we believe that other people respect us? When we have those sorts of social relationships, our self-esteem tends to increase, and it provides a solid foundation for our feelings of self-worth. What we would focus on during the course is how these sorts of experiences would then feed into our feelings of self-worth. And oftentimes there's a reciprocal association where how we feel about ourselves influence the sorts of accomplishments that we have in our lives. But also importantly, those accomplishments also feed back into our self-esteem. When we feel more accomplished in certain areas, we frequently will feel better about ourselves as well. As we go through the course, my hope is that you will learn a great deal about what self-esteem is, what it does for us, where it comes from, and what it's connected to. In addition to learning about self-esteem, my goal is for you to also learn practical tips and strategies for strengthening and building your own self-esteem. I think this is going to be a very exciting journey for us, and I'm very excited to be a part of this. Thank you for being here.